Hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily T.A. Wrap. Where we take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective and ask ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about tomorrow. I do a show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of the beautiful and wet Rocky Mountains. So, um... So what happened today? So today we get a nice big push. Uh, you know, it's the same old thing where this old market just doesn't want to go down. And it's kind of hard to fight that. And if you are trying to fight that, that's really too bad because it's um, working against you, right? And you kind of have to just go with the flow if you're going to go. So let's, uh, let's pull up the numbers here, take a look at it and see what we got all right so Dow Jones up uh, 140 points over 15,000 again 15,063 SPX uh, 1671 was the close up 16 and a half four percent composite up 46 up 3706 was the close Indiex up uh, 36 and a half 3169 3170 was the close Russell the winner today up a point and 1.61 percent, 16 half points, 1046, uh, making this move back towards the highs. If we look at the charts, now the last couple of days I've been talking about. Actually, it's been more than more than a couple. Uh, we, if you go back to last week, this bar was the key bar, right? We were coming up against the breakdown bar. You had two breakdown bars on the leg down. You had one here, and you had another one there. Then you came into support, big bar support, it holds. You try to break it down three, four times, and then you start to head back up. But on that particular bar, you can tell from the candle itself, on that particular bar, we ended up with a reversal. And that was after we came back from Labor Day and everybody else had already moved higher. We move higher immediately to start the day. And then we end up giving it all back by the end of the day. That looked like a clean reversal. It looked like this market wanted to go lower. That's what I said that night. And then the next night, I did an about face, told you I was totally wrong, and that this market was telling us it wanted to go higher. If you didn't pay attention to that, and it's not easy to do that, it's not easy to make that kind of call on the fly, you know, when the market's been down, that's, those are hard things to do. But the market will tell you what it wants to do. If you are reading the tape, doing the neoclassical approach that I teach, that I trade, I told my folks that day and I told you that night that that was a reversal and we had to pay attention to it. That market opened right around, the, right around the close of the prior day, just a little bit higher, and it proceeded to just run straight up. Never, you know, after the first five minutes to trade that morning, you didn't have a shot. You either had to get in it or you had to eat it somewhere on the way up. And if you didn't do that, you had one more chance on Friday to get out. And if you didn't get out then, hey, it's too late. What are you doing tonight? You're over the swing point high. That high has 24 uh, let me get this up a little bit higher so I can see it. It has 24.3 on it. We did 20, 31. So we go over it, what, 25% more shares trade. Okay, it's going after this bar now. It's going after the next breakdown bar. That bar is high as 1570, I mean 1580, I believe. 15, oh, excuse me, 16, 1679. So you're going after the next breakdown bar. Volume's expanding as you go over to swing point. That's going to flip around the trend to confirm sideways. Right? It's going to change things. And actually, it should be one, two. Yeah. Okay, that was the break. That okay. So it it, it changes sideways on the way back up. Okay. You'll get another change to bullish if you can get over this high but that first you gotta attack this bar this is the next big bar and it's not that far away now right we closed at 1671 and we're only talking eight points um, you know that can happen tomorrow morning so it's not a big deal 
right? And we're heading right back up there. Now, what's a big deal is it's got 34 million on it, and we're doing 31 on the way back so far. But it doesn't matter until we get there and we see what it looks like. Dow Jones. Dow gets over the swing point finally. Remember, the Dow could not get over the breakdown bar. It tried multiple times, right? Today, it blows that bar away, takes the stops with it, goes over the next swing point, one point. 01 does 9, doesn't have the volume. The Dow is the laggard and it's getting pulled higher by everything else. Okay, so if you want to invest on the way up, I don't suggest you go buy in the Dow. You know, you don't buy the weak stuff, you buy the strong. And when you're getting rid of stuff, you don't sell the strong, you sell the weak. And that's a hard thing to do, but it is the right thing to do. And so here we go on the way back up, it gets over it. It's going to turn suspect sideways tomorrow, and the Dow, you know, who knows where it can go. I'm probably back up to this bar, 15.105, another 100 points. Actually, it's not even that far. It's 50 points. So 50 gets you back into the big bar. Yeah, that's probably a reasonable spot. 50, 50 points or more, probably 100 points actually. You know, given you'll get another 100 points out of this if the S&P does what it wants to do. Now we go to what was telling us that this was coming, in which I discussed last night. I discussed with members last week. I actually wrote an article here about it. Fear of squeeze higher, not a crash. Over here on the site, fear of squeeze higher, not a crash. Wrote that on what, the 5th? You know, because everybody's so bearish coming into September and October, all the world may just crash, right? And, and actually there's been a series of articles where I've argued that a crash just isn't in the cards because the structure is not there to support it. And you know, it's not as if I can predict the future, but I can see the structure. And if the structure is not there, it makes it pretty hard to happen. And if it's pretty hard to happen, it's not something I really want to bet on. Swing point highs, multiples. This is the NDX. This was the one that was going to take them out, took it out right at the beginning this morning. That was what got everything started. Two swing point highs, multiple swing points, and that's only on a single time frame though. If we go over to weekly, you don't have it on multiple time frames. So if you don't have it on multiple time frames, what's the application? Well, the application is that you will trade higher for one or two bars, typically. You can go up to three off that time frame. What does that mean? That means three days in this case, one to three days. Well, today's number one. So I would expect this thing carries through tomorrow and potentially into Wednesday. Or you may get a pullback by then, do a retest, regenerate, and then try to move higher. But that was the one that was telling us that there was the potential for a big break, not a big break, but a break to the top side. And that it would probably carry if it did it because it was taking out multiple swing points. As a matter of fact, if you remember what I told you is that the NDX would be the one that led us. It was first this morning, within the first, I think, 15, 20 minutes. And once it did it, what happens? Well, here comes the NASDAQ, right? Because the NASDAQ has triples, right? Three of them sitting up there. And what does it do? It takes them all out. Every one of them, volume expands. This baby, I don't know if it got enough for this one. It looks like it did. That's a 14, 7, 16. And we did 16.6. Yeah, so it's got enough for all of them. Confirmed bullish trend on the upside breakout. This one's going to try to carry. Again, all in a single time frame. You don't have it on multiple time frames. This is your weekly, right? But that, dang, that can and probably will carry as a result of the break of multiple swing points. And that's what I was talking about when I talked about fear squeeze higher. These things, the structure was set up for it to happen. And when it is, then you have to say to yourself, okay, where's the risk? The risk is to the upside, not the downside. And it's all about risk, folks, every bit. IWM, well, actually, let's look at the Russell. So the Russell was trying to get, now the Russell was in a unique situation because the Russell, unlike the rest, is actually attacking a swing point high and the first of the breakdown bars. 
and in a way that tells you this one's been stronger than the listed issues but weaker than the NASDAQ and the NDX. Today what does it do? 30, 310 over 243 over 342 doesn't have as much volume as you'd like compared to what it's getting over but folks it got over it and as long as it gets over it and stays over it, and I think it did 44.66 yeah as long as it gets over and stays over it, it can carry and I expect with the NDX pushing, the NASDAQ pushing, if they continue to push, which odds are they will, this one's going to push and it's going to go after its multiple swing points. It's already did one, there's another one here, there's another one at the high. So all your indexes, well not all of them, two of them are pulling the rest of them is really what's happening. Okay, I haven't had a chance to look at the sector so let's run through these together and see what we got. I'll we'll start with the transports. Now the transports was a mess, the chart. And what does it do? It starts to fill the gap. And that would make sense. It's going to come into this bar, 116.14. And it's almost there. So that will come into this bar tomorrow. It doesn't have the volume. That's probably where it's going to, that's probably where it's going to hesitate. You also got two swing points right there. And so you can imagine that's going to be a tough spot to get over. So that's, that's where it's heading, so a little bit more up for it. SMHs, the semis. On the semis, we just keep pushing. We're over one swing point, going for the next. And then we'll just have the highs left. So it doesn't have the volume, but you know the semis a lot of times just don't care if they have the volume. It will attack that swing point tomorrow, 39.16. XLB. Going after the highs, gets over them, and it looks like it has the volume. 5.6, nope, not quite. It's going to be suspect break of a swing point high, but that is the high, and I expect it's probably going to carry. Now, these are suspect breaks. What does that tell you? That tells you within six bars, they're probably going to come back. XLE and do a retest regen. XLE, and it was going for the highs as well. It got over the first one last week. It's got two more, and it's lined up to break them both tomorrow. 83.85, 83.96, doing six there, doing eight here, doing eight today. Going to break them. It's going to blow right past them and carry, and that's going to help the SPX. It's a big part of the sector. Let's see if the financials can do it. Now, the financials are just trying to get back to a swing point high. They had a much deeper retrace than everything else. Okay, so they're doing 325, well, I only got 245 sitting up there. And you're coming into this bar. That's the 815 bar, that's 1999. We got to 2003, so we're in the bar. This is going to carry, folks. It's going to get over the swing point high and get into the breakdown bar. That's the breakdown bar that we've been looking elsewhere. Okay, that will be the, that will be the area, just like the SPX, where it probably hesitates. XLI. All right, on the XLI, let's see here. It's over the swing point high. It has the volume. Look at every one of these are set up the way they're. They're all multiple swing point highs. And if they don't get over them this week, a lot of these are going to be breaks on multiple time frames. In other words, if we weren't to push up so fast, if these bulls weren't so anxious, the situa situation would actually improve for them. But you know, this market, you can't you can't wait, and everybody jumps the gun as soon as it starts, and that's what they're doing here again. This one's going to carry; it's going to go after the next set of swing points. So the only bar that could give it problems, forty five, forty two, and we're into it. Uh, yeah, this is going to try to carry to the highs. So one by one, every one of these are going to change their trends. They're all changing, right? Every one of them's changing either to sideways or bullish. Uh, the technology, that's 32.14. We closed at 32.15. It also changes it. 5.7 going, yeah, so it actually has the volume too. 
turns to confirm bullish, that one will go after the last swing point high. Multiple swing points again, it's going to try to break. And I think you kind of get the, the, the feel here as to what's happening. So if y'all have some questions, I'll try to answer them because uh, this all looks the same. Your weaker sectors, they're just going to try to get back to their swing points. I suspect that will be true here at the XLU as well. Yeah, it will simply try to get back to the swing points. And let's look at the last two. XLV yesterday or two days ago got over a swing point high. It's struggling into resistance right now. Let's see, today it did 4.2. The bar is dealing with the top 6.4, 5.8. Well, the money's not running into this one yet. It is over the swing point high, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to have more trouble than the other ones, it looks like. going to get caught here. So the volume's not expanding. Money's not rotating to it yet. But if, if in fact, this market's going to move higher, the money's going to rotate to these weaker sectors, you know, a week or so down the road. And so you'll see that probably start to take place if, in fact, the market wants to work higher. Uh, let's see here. XLY. It's over the swing point. Here's another one. Now this one was the one that we were wondering if it would be able to do it, and it did it. It got over it. It's going to close the gap tomorrow. And that's the last resistance of significance, 59.31. And I would think it's going to hit it tomorrow. We'll see if it can get over it. So this bar from 8.14 is the bar it's going to try to get over. If it does, it's going to take out the swing point highs. All right, there's two of them up there. You got one here on the second. You got another one over here on the twelfth. Okay, let's see what the ox markets did. I believe, if I remember right, uh, today the TLT flipped around and was actually supporting this market. So let's start with that one. And that was one of the tells we talked about last night. Well, not too good though. Actually, it didn't close that well. Uh, the prior close was uh, 103.05, it closes at 103.10, so not much. This one's still struggling, folks. That's actually not a very nice looking chart. So if we get interest rates trying to test that bottom again, especially if they break out, that's probably going to put a damper on this rally. So this is definitely one to keep watching. Gold and silver, they were kind of hanging today. They didn't do much. They just kind of hung there. Silver actually traded down. Gold just hung. No volume, can't get up. I wouldn't be surprised to see this one try to come back and test again. Let's see if silver, I know it was weaker. Let's see how bad it was. Man, not that bad. So they, they both look like they're going to try to test this breakout area, right? You had a big push up. Then you had, you know, hes not hesitation, but consolidation. And then another large push. You tested it once, no volume. If you come back and test it again, you got no volume, you can hang there then you can potentially set up another leg. Let me look at the gold. So that was, yeah, same two bars. Same same test on both of them. Dollar sold off today. Um, you know, with the Syrian news and the possibility of us not striking, not only because the Senate isn't going to vote for it, it looks like, or not the Senate, but the Congress, uh, in particular the House, and this idea floated by Kerry that if they just turned over all their chemical weapons uh, to international bodies, then we wouldn't need to strike them. Um, you know, that's certainly put a damper in the dollar flight to safety kind of rally, and the dollar sells off. It has no volume as it comes back, but you know, this is hard to read. I don't see a good read on it. Let's see if the FXE might tell us something. Okay, so it pushes there. Wow. Right to the top of resistance and can't quite get over it. So the top is this bar. 131.17. Closes at 131.26, so it's in it. That looks like it's going to try to close the gap. And try to get back up in here and maybe get as high as this bar. 132.28. Yeah, that would that would push the dollar back to down towards the lows. I, I suspect the yen is just selling off still. 
you know, they are. They're coming back down. Uh, just, you know, you can see the path of least resistance here. They're going to go after the lows again before long. Uh, oil probably selling down. Actually, I know it was today. Not that much. So it's still hovering up here. Remember it broke swing points? Here's a case of what we were talking about. Now, now this one was special because we thought it would come back. It did, right? Comes back, does the retest, regenerates or attempts to. Volume was pretty good, but it wasn't as high as that high, so it's going to come back and test some more. Right? If you can't get over it, you're going to test the other side, and that's what they're going to do here. Uh, I haven't looked at Nat Gas in a long time. Let's see what this looks like. It's starting to roll over again. That is one ugly chart, but you know what? It's building a base. <laughs> that's a heck of a way to build a base, but it's building it. That's the weekly. So, Nat Gas. You know, I know there's too much of it, but it certainly looks like it's building a base at these levels. Let me take a quick look at copper. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's still hanging up there. Okay, let me see what kind of questions you got. See if I can help you all out a little bit. What little time I have left. So, bond future selling down tonight. Let me flip to a different screen over here and see. So I see stock futures up a little bit, bonds, yeah, the bonds down a quarter of a percent. Yeah, the bonds, the bonds, bonds are a story, folks. I mean, if they start breaking again, right, interest rates climb over 3%, it's going to be hard for this market to keep rallying, right? So, you know, the only thing, the only thing that, that could be a silver lining is if they do do that, you know, and, and they break one more time, <laughs> then people may say there's no way the Fed's going to taper. Right? Matter of fact, they may increase on the bond purchases. So I don't know if it's going to come to that, but I mean, it's pretty hard to see the Fed not buying as many bonds when the bonds can't even find a buyer now. Right? And the Fed is a huge part of the buying, or a big part of it. So we'll, we'll see how that one works out. Okay, I, you know, the question that one should be asking me, since nobody asked it, I'll ask it myself, and that is, okay, how far can we go, right? Now that we see that we've got the breakouts and the breakouts are there, across the sectors, across the indexes, just how far can the indexes go? Well, we kind of talked about that a little bit here with the SPX, saying, okay, the next big test on the SPX is the breakdown bar from August 15th. That's the next test, and that's not that far away, eight points. I would think you're going to get some sort of a pullback there. That would bring your NDX IXC, the NASDAQ composite, back in, right, and allow you to do a retest, regenerate, and then try to push higher. So push up into this area, pause, a little pullback, right, some retest, boom, go up and try to break them out. Now this all flies in the face of the calendar which says we still have Syrian issues. We don't know if those are going to work. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some volatility as a result of that issue as the news leaks and ebbs and flows. But the bigger issue was the taper question and it's almost like nobody even cares anymore. You know with the unemployment num number coming out fairly weak on Friday. Now everybody's saying, oh, well, even if they taper, it's just going to be barely. If those bonds start selling off, I don't even know if they'll taper. You might have the Fed come out and tell you that, you know, because they'll leak what they want to. So, all right. Uh, all right, one more question here. Also, which index or sector is likely to go the farthest on the way up? The ones that are breaking multiple swing points. The ones that we just looked at, XLE was one of them. Um, matter of fact, a lot of them were set up to do it, but the XLE is about to, the XLB just broke. I think you have to look to those, right? Especially, you know, if I'm playing this the way I'm playing it and saying, okay, we've got enough divergence, you know, and divergence to me, if you think about it, divergence is here. It's quite evident. These are weaker. They're not even pushing to new highs yet. They're just trying to get back up there and test Whereas your NDX and the, the NASDAQ are already at new highs. IWM is probably going to join them pretty soon. So the weaker ones are divergent. 
What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that more than likely it's going to constrain to some extent the stronger ones. More than likely. It doesn't mean it will happen, but more than likely. And if that's the case, then the situation is such that what you should expect is some sort of a, a pullback somewhere in the midst of this push higher that would give you retest regens on the strong stuff. XLB, XLE when they break out. Retest regen on the, on the retrace. Those are the ones that I would be going after, right, as they come back. So you don't have to buy them breaking out. Folks, 80% of everything that breaks out comes back. Within six bars, the majority of it does. And if it's suspect, it almost always does. Well, you know, not almost always, but it's eight, you know, the 80% applies to the suspect. And, and all that data, you know, I, I throw these numbers out at you a lot. But all that data is in this book, Trend Trade Setups. I laid it all out for you. If you don't have the book, if you, if you want to understand this more, I mean, these two books really lay it out. The first one talks about the whole neoclassical approach, the model itself. The next one takes and extends it and says, okay, how can we find the best trades? You know, using that. And that's where I lay out a lot of data. I talk about the types of trades that are there. And I actually pull time into it all which very, is very hard to do. And so, you know, if you're looking for the answers, and, you know, I don't have all the answers. It's a model. The model works pretty good, though. If you want to understand the model, you know, check out the books. Um, you know, you can, you can certainly listen to me as much as you want. You'll pick up a lot here. But, you know, if you want to delve into it deeper, that's where you want to go. What do I think about the GDX? I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Let's take a look at it and see what it, what we got. Uh, let me see here. Subsectors. I, I don't think it went anywhere today. I wasn't watching it that close. Okay, so remember we had big volume coming down, right? That also left volume at the top, which is good. Yeah. All right, so it's hanging here. This, this one's going to travel farther down. I wouldn't be in a hurry here, folks. Especially, I mean, think about it. Why did all this stuff go up? Well, all the worries. Now, why is it coming down? Well, it seems like nobody's worried now as the market breaks out. So, you know, be patient. Let these things come in some. They're going to come back in farther. I think I suggested last time they could come into this bar. There's actually two places. One is the top of this bar. And believe it or not, they could come as deep as the bottom of that bar with this little, you know, top of this one, June 28th, bottom of that one, August 8th. Now that's like an ideal buy, you know, if it would come that deep. And nobody would want to buy it down there, I'm sure. But, you know, if you drift back in there or you come down real fast and you get right into that area and you got no volume, I don't know, it looks like a pretty good spot to me. So, RGLD, let's see what she looks like. I haven't looked at her in a long time. Uh, actually, let me pull this back in since we're on the charts again. RGLD, this would be the last one I got to shut it off after this. So Royal Gold, Gold is a special one. Uh, there's a couple of them like this. Um, they finance a lot of the mining and they get paid in gold. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. You know, again, they can all get deeper though. It, you know, it's not a bad spot. It's, it's trying to hold on to the big bar. Um, it got underneath it. You know, I, I just be patient. Let's see what the rest of them want to do. If they all start holding and starting to turn, no, yeah, that you you want to find like I said earlier, you want to find the strongest ones. This is a strong one. There are strong ones and there's weak ones. Don't go after the weak. Go after the strong. Folks, have a great night. I appreciate you being there. Tell a friend. Tell two. As always, I'm L. A. Little. This is and was your daily T. A. Wrap. Have yourself a great night, and I'll catch you next time. Take